Hey everyone, welcome back to Code of the Row. In this video, I'm going to be showing how to set up a bear or any animal of your choice. And you can do this for whatever animal you want. And this is just going to be using plain vanilla Unreal Engine 5. No add-ons, no plugins. And let's get started. But it is going to use an asset pack by Malpers because we don't have a bear model. So what I'm going to do is hit launch on my 5.4.2. And now I'm just going to go up to games, go to third person, and I'll just call this shapeshift and hit create. And now on my Epic Games Launcher, I'm just going to add this Poly Art Bear by Malibur's Animations into my project and click Add to Project. And now you'll see I have this Poly Art Bear folder, which comes with a map of an overview of all the bears. And I'll wait for the shaders to load, and they already did. And if I hit play, you can see the anim animations of all different types of bears. And let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is head over to my Poly Art Bear folder, right click, create a blueprint class, and let's create a character. And I'll just call this bear underscore BP. Double click to open this up. And now we're gonna need a skeletal mesh and an anim class. So for the skeletal mesh, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna select one of the bears. So I'll use this grizzly bear and align him with this capsule component, making sure the feet aligns with the bottom of this capsule and the radius fits the bear. And this looks good to me. So now what I need to do is create a simple anim class. So now let's go ahead and create our animation blueprint by right clicking into our content folder, go to animation, and creating an animation blueprint. And I'm gonna select the bear skeleton and I'm just gonna call this bear underscore ABP for animation blueprint. And now when I double click to open this up, you're gonna see that there's no nothing except for an output pose that currently has a note saying that the result was visible but ignored. And if I go to the event graph, it's kind of empty except for this event blueprint update animation that's faded out. And now in my bear ABP, I just wanna set some references to the owning character whenever this blueprint's initialized. So I'm actually gonna move this down and I'm gonna right click and call an event blueprint initialize animation. And I wanna drag this out and cast to character because this bear is a character class. And I'm gonna right click on this object or I'm actually gonna drag this object out and get owning actor. And I can delete that get pawn thing. And then for the character, I'm gonna right click, promote this to a variable and just name it character. And now I want to target the character movement. So I'm just gonna drag this out and get character movement. And once that's done, I'm gonna right click the character movement and promote this to a variable called character movement and just set this. And this looks good to me. And you'll probably see something just like this in your third person blueprint character for the Manny. So I'm just gonna highlight all of this, hit C to comment and set references to owning character when initialized. And now down here for the event to blueprint update animation that was here before, I'm just gonna get an is valid node for our character. So I'm gonna get this character and I'm gonna right click this to convert to a validated get, which will give us this get value with the is valid or is not valid. And I'm just gonna connect the execution pins here and then connect this over to a sequence. So I'll give it some more room. And the first thing I wanna do is find a way to get our movement speed for our bear. So I'm just going to set velocity, but I actually need to make that into a variable. So what I need to do is let's get our movement component. So I'm gonna create a new variable called velocity and change this from a Boolean, a Boolean to a vector. And then I also wanna create a float called ground speed and change this from a vector to a float. And now I'll just drag these both, I'll drag both of them up here as setters. So set to the velocity and set the ground speed. And what I wanna do with this velocity is get the movement component from my character. So down here we added this character movement component. So I'm just gonna get character and plug this in to, to a get velocity, just like this. And now I can pin this get velocity node into the setter of our velocity. And now I need a way to connect these two, but it's not gonna be compatible. So when I drag this out for the vector node, I wanna get a vector length x, y in order to return a value of a float. And I'm just gonna connect the then zero to the setter and then here to here. And this will set our velocity to our ground speed. And you'll see why we need this as soon as we make our blend space in a little bit. So I'll just comment this vector to float and then what I want to do next is just test our Boolean to see if it's moving. So all I need to do is just add another variable called should move. 
and set this to a type of Boolean. And now I'll just add a setter up here and I'm just going to connect this pin to here, but we need to give it some, we need to give it some, but we'll need to tell it when this is possible. So when should this be true and false? So I'm going to drag this out to an and node. So an and Boolean, just like this. And now there are two things that we want to confirm to set our should move to true. And that's going to be if our ground speed is greater than something like one. So I'm just going to grab this setter or I'm just going to grab, grab this ground speed. So I'm going to right click and look for a greater than sign just like this. And I want to grab our ground speed, get ground speed and connect this to the top In the bottom one, I'll do something like two and I'll connect this to the top one. So if ground speed is greater than two and we want to get our current acceleration. So in order to do that, I'm just going to drag my character movement, get character movement, get current acceleration. And when I do a not equals to, and I'll leave the rest as zero and connect this. So if our current acceleration is not equal to zero, and if our ground speed is greater than two, then set move sh should move should be true. So now I'm just going to highlight all of this and comment and set should move to true only if ground speed is above two. and this is just so smaller velocities can't trigger false animations and that looks good to me so i'm going to hit compile and save and now we need to start playing with our anim graph so i'm going to right click and create a state machine so i'll create a state machine and i'll just leave the name as new state machine and connect this to the output pose so a state machine is it represents each specific animation or a blend of animations so in this case we'll be doing idle walking and running and it'll help make some transition rules. So let's double click to get into this. So the entry determines what we're going to be starting with. So in this case, I'm just, you can add a conduit, a state or a state alias, and I'm just going to add a state and call this idle. So for example, when we double click into idle, this is going to be the output animation. So in my asset browser, I'm just going to look for an idle animation and just plug this in because when our bear is spawned or not doing anything, it's just going to be like this, just an idle animation. And now I'll go back to my new state machine. And now we want to add another state. So I'll drag this out and don't forget for your entry, you just want to connect this execution pin to your idle state. And now I'll connect the idle state to something else to another state. And I'll call this run. And now I'll double click into the between this little logo between them. So if idle is transitioning to run, this is what's going to set it's true. So this will say, if this is true, then it will be set to run. So I'll double click on this and I'll just say should move then it can enter the transition. And now I'll go back and we don't want this thing to be running forever. So we want to set it back to idle eventually. So I'll just drag an arrow going back here and I'll double click into this one. So what will cause our run to go back to the idle state and I'll do should not move. So I'm going to get move and then I'm just going to look for a big not just like this called a not Boolean and I'll connect it just like that. But now let's set up our run. So in order for our character to run, we want to create a blend space that's going to tell it how much speed it needs in order to run, walk and jog and so on. So let's go ahead and try that out. So back in my content browser, I'm just going to right click over here in my folder and I'm going to go to animation. And in this case, I need to create in a blend space 1D. So I don't need to create this kind of blend space, but if we go to legacy and go to blend space 1D, and select the bear skeleton. I'm going to call this bear underscore run underscore BS. Double click to open this up. And now you'll see um, something that looks fairly complex, but in reality, it's actually not. So there's only going to be one axis because this is a one dimensional blend space. So you'll see down here, it says side to side, none from zero to 100 by default. But what I actually wanted to check and I can edit these settings over here, just right up here, I'm going to call this speed. And the minimum value I'll leave at zero, which will be our idle. And the maximum I'll do something like 600. So now you'll see that when I change the name to speed here and 600, the value of 600, it's going to be updated down here. So there's a few things I want to see. So I'm going to add a run forward all the way to where 600 is supposed to be. And it will out automatically snap to the middle like this. And it will only stay running if we move because we haven't set any other speeds up yet. Cause at 600, we're just running. So now I'm going to look for a walk animation. So if I walk forward, let's say that's around here and I can just click on this and set it up here. So I'll set this to something like 200 to walk. And now I'll look for an idle animation 
and just bring that in over here. And this looks pretty good to me. And if you hold control and just move your mouse over, you can test these out. So as you go left and right, you'll see this green X that's a preview value to show how the speed would look like. So for example, around 100 speed, my bear will look like this. Around 200, he'll be doing the full walk animation. And around 600, he'll do the full run animation. And if I go around 400, it looks like it's kind of speed walking or jogging a bit. Now hit control save and go back to my bear ABP. And now I'm gonna drag that blend space that we created called bear run BS and plug this in. And you're gonna see that the speed that we created as the variable is gonna be able to be an input over here. And since we already made the justifications and the rule set for our ground speed, I'm just gonna drag this in, get ground speed and connect this to speed. And since they're both type float, they work together. They're able to work. So if we left this ground speed as a vector node, then it wouldn't be able to connect because it would be a type mismatch, just like here in the event graph. This is why we turned our character movement velocity, which is the vector, into a float. So now I just want to open up my bare BP like this into the blueprint editor. And now I need to adjust this event graph because if I play it right now, nothing's actually going to happen. So I set it as my bear PP over here. And let me go back to my other map. So if I were to click play right now, you'd see that the camera would just be stuck and I can't actually move around. And now in my bare BP, I am going to add a, quite a few things. So the first thing I want to do is on event begin play, I want to cast to my player controller. And there is actually a faster way of just doing this. So the first thing I want to do is add some input mapping. So after this event begin play, I want to cast to my player controller and the object will be get controller which is gonna be our pawn. And as player controller, I actually wanna call the enhanced input local player subsystem. And then after the player controller, we're gonna to check to see if this is valid. So down here at the bottom, and I wanna connect this enhanced input local player subsystem to the input object. And if it is valid, we're gonna call and add mapping context. And now the default in the third person player BP is this IMC default. And if we go to the browse to open this up, you're gonna be able to see the controls that we have currently set up. So we have spacebar to jump, WASD to move around, and using your mouse to look around, just like a normal game. So now I'll go back to my character, my bear character, and call this set up inputs. And now let's go ahead and add some camera app input. And as we can see in our IMC default, it's called IA look. So I'm just gonna go down here, look for IA underscore look. And now, and now I just want to, so now I'm just gonna add controller yaw input and add controller pitch. So if currently your IA look looks like this action value in blue, you can just right click on this action value and split the struct spin to split this action value X and action value Y. And now what we wanna do is connect the action value X in order to the value of the controller yaw input because this is gonna rotate our mouse on the X axis and the action value Y will control our pitch input to control our axis on the Y value. And I'll just comment over these and type in camera input and hit compile and save. And you'll notice that we actually don't have a camera yet, but we'll set that up after we set up our movement. And down here, let's set up our IA move for movement. So again, I'm gonna right click on this action value, split struct spin for the action value. And now I just wanna add some movement input and I'll create some space. And for the world direction, I wanna get right vector. For the in rot value, I'm gonna right click split struct spin and I'm gonna get control rotation. And again, I wanna right click this return value and split the pin. And I'm just gonna return that X value and the Z value. And now for this X, I'm just gonna connect it to the first scale value, and this will control our left and right. So I'm just gonna highlight these three and comment left slash right and move this back a little bit. And now I essentially wanna do this again. So I'm just gonna copy these two and place them over here, just to get control rotation and to add movement input. And I'll connect these execution pins over here but instead of get right vector, now I want to get forward vector and split the pin. And for the forward vector, we only want to connect the Z and make sure the return value is connected to the world direction. And for this scale, this time I'm going to go back and connect it to my Y. So I'll comment over this and call this forward slash backward like so. And then I'll highlight over all of it and call this movement. And I'll hit compile and save. And now we're going to add a couple things. So the first thing you want to make sure is that this arrow is pointing in the forward direction of the bear. So I'm just going to line this up a little and that looks good to me. And now I need to add two things, which is going to be a spring arm and a camera. And now for the spring arm, I'm just going to set the target arm length to something like 600 and the socket offset. 
for the Y will be something like, or for the Z will be something like, let's say 400, maybe 300. Hopefully it's not too far. And then for the camera, I'm just gonna click on it, rotate it downwards just so it looks like it's pointing directly to the bear. And that looks good to me. And for the spring arm, I'm actually gonna use control, use pawn control rotation. So now when I go over to my third person map and hit play, you'll see that I can now control my bear. And it is kind of always looking forward, but it's able to move and animate properly. And yeah, this looks pretty good to me. But let's fix that camera issue because I don't want to always be staring forward. So in order to fix the movement, there are two things we need to check. So I'll click on bear BP and I'll search for yaw. And I want to make sure that use controller rotation yaw is disabled. And I'll hit compile and save. And next I want to check for is to make sure that the orient rotation to movement is true. So I'll hit compile and save. And now when I play this, you'll see that I can move around and look at my bear and which, whatever direction I use my WASD in, my bear will move in that direction. And there you have it. You've set up a completely working functional bear. <laughs> Thanks for watching Code with Row. Like, subscribe, comment below what you want to see next, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.